out to pull my door Early this morning You knocked upon my door And I said hello Satan I believe it's time to go All right, so today we're going to be looking at Me and the Devil Blues by Robert Johnson. It's such a good song. Um, just a little bit of backstory to the song before we jump right into it. Robert Johnson, a uh, legend was that he sold his soul to the devil. I personally think he wrote this song as kind of a, just trying to be funny and be like, I, I'm in on the joke. Um, but anyways, it's a really, really cool song, and I'm going to try to teach it to you the best that I can. It's not exactly like he plays it to be honest it's more like uh, the way clapton played it on when he's doing his record me and mr johnson or the documentary that he did on robert johnson it's more like that but it is very close i think to what robert johnson is playing uh, some of robert johnson's stuff is just so out there and so technically profound even though a lot of people don't give him credit for that but that's a whole nother thing okay all right so this is an a the key of a and at its root, it is a 12-bar blues, but there's some cool things going on here. So let's start with the intro, and then we'll just walk through how it looks. Okay, so the intro sounds like this. Okay, first thing you need to know, on our right hand, we're just using our thumb and our pointer finger. That's it. Um, you don't really have to use your middle or ring finger that you can if you want to I'm just using uh, my thumb and my pointer and it's kind of what you're doing is you're droning uh, the low A string for the most part until you switch over to an E chord and it's a low E string um, and also a D chord actually I'll show you why it still uses a low E string and then on your pointer finger and right you're just kind of like doing up rakes so you're raking the high E, the B, and the G string, you're just kind of going up on it. Like that. And that's pretty much the whole song with your right hand. Again, you can throw your other fingers in there, but I usually try to just keep it um, to these two fingers. Um, and so that's, that's just kind of how it works. Okay, so the first chord is an A7 variation. And so what you're doing is you're, again, you're droning with your thumb the bass note, or the root note of this one, which is a low A, or not a low A, it's rather just the A string, um, and you're droning that while you're playing underneath this first chord. This first chord is going to be the ninth fret of the G string, the eighth fret of the B string, and the ninth fret of the high E string. Okay? You're going to you're gonna want to slide that up. really doesn't matter where you slide it up from, just to get that sound at the beginning. Okay, you're going to play that once. Uh, and this you're going to kind of pluck them all at the same time. So you're plucking down. And when I say uh, it's kind of a drone, is what they call it, and Robert Johnson did it all the time, it's you're using the meat of your palm, and I know that's kind of a weird way to say it, but that's the only way I can think of, um, to palm mute so that you're not letting the A note ring out so much. You can. But to make it sound a little bit more like Robert Johnson, you're going to want to drone it, which again is just using the back of your palm and kind of keeping it quiet like that. And then, like we said, you're using your pointer finger to rake up on the high E, the B, and the G strings. Okay. So again, all right, so you're going to take that shape and you're just going to walk it down a fret each time. So it's going to go okay. So it's so it starts with the G string, ninth, B string, eighth, high E, ninth. Take that whole shape go down one fret so that's G string 7 uh, excuse me G string 8 B string 7 
high E string eight, and then do it one more time, which is the G string seven, six on the B string, seven on the high E. Okay, so you're gonna go once, so that's the first part. So one, one, drone, one. So what's that top? One. Okay. So after you do that, this is probably the hardest chord in the song, I think. It's a long A7, so let me get these fingers out of the way so you can see it. It's a monster. Uh, there's really no other way of saying it. It is a monster, um, but it is a good monster. And so what you're going to do is you're going to leave that A string open. Nothing's going on there. Then you're going to bar with your first finger. You're barring the D, G, B, and E string all at the second fret. Now to make it a seventh chord, you do two things. One of the things you can do is you take your middle finger, and you can put it on the third fret of the high E. It's gonna make a seventh chord. But to get this long A7, just a variation, you're gonna take your pinky, and here's the stretch. Keep that bar all at the second fret. Take your pinky and put it on the high E string of the fifth fret. Okay, so that's quite a stretch. I have to practice that a couple of times, but that's going to get that sound that you want there. Okay, so you've got to the long A. Okay, now after you do that, so what that is is just a classic blues walk down. So what that is, is you're going to leave, you can either use your pinky or your ring finger, but either way, it's going to be anchored on the high E string of the 5th fret. And then, depending on how you choose to do it, you're walking down on the D string. So it starts on the 5th fret, the 4th fret, and the 3rd fret of the D string. Okay, so that's... That's how it would sound just with your thumb. And then you're keeping that, you're doing the raking again, raking up, just trying to really, you can, you don't want to hit that B string, so you're really just trying to hit the high E string. Um, and so again, it's going to sound like this. Now, two things you can do here, and it's up to you. You can go, so you have the third fret, and then you can go one more. To the second fret of the D string, again, it's quite a stretch. It's really just back to your long A, right? Or you can do this little lick. So it's going to be the five of the D string, four of the D string, three of the D string, and then so that first time it didn't sound that great, but all right. So what that is is you're starting by playing the high E string of the second fret hammering onto the third fret of high E string and then pulling off okay so that, again that's playing second fret hammer on the third and then you're pulling off from you pull off from the third to the second and the second to open so that would sound like. And then you're going into an E7 chord. And that's it. That's a turnaround. One thing you do with the E7 chord, if you know your E7 chord, low E's open, second fret of the A string, open D string, first fret of the G string, open B and open high E. But you can use your pinky and then bend up on that third fret of the B string as you play that. 
Okay, so you put all that together, it would sound. All you're doing, again, is you're playing, you're just kind of, you can hit every note on this one, uh, which is nice, um, but you're playing that root note, and then strumming up with your pointer finger. And that's the, the whole intro, right? So. Okay, so the song is going to be a 12 bar blues, and there's not a quick change on this one, so just a straight 12 bar blues, which is nice. And it's gonna go our first chord, which is an A7 variation. This is gonna be this bad boy right here. Sounds a little different than what we started with. So, early this morning, not upon my door. So that's the first section. What is this chord? Okay. First of all, you're just going to play the bottom five strings. Don't play the low E on this one. It's going to sound weird. Don't want to do that. Okay, so it's open A string. Again, you're droning with your thumb. Okay. Open A string. And then, after that, you're going to do your first, your pointer finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the D string. Your ring finger is going to be on the 6th fret of the G string. And your middle finger is going to be on the 5th fret of the B string. And then your high E is open. Okay? So you plug it together. All together it's going to sound like that. So keep that droning going. Now, cool thing here. You know that chord now. Me and the devil. Walking side by side. All he does, plays that, takes that whole shape, walking side by side, and just like we did with the intro with this shape, and we went down a fret, same thing with this. You don't change your shape, you just let all your fingers go down a fret. So you're still playing the droning of the open A, this time your pointer finger's on the fourth fret of the D, your ring finger's on the fifth fret of the G, middle fingers on the B string of the fourth fret and then you got your high E open. So it would sound like this. Me and the devil walking side by side. So that's how you would change it kind of back and forth. Okay, so it's Me and the devil stay on it on the A and then we're gonna move it up, down a fret. Walking side by side, back up a fret. So that's kind of when you're ending the first part, it's just bum, bum, bum. Me and the devil. So if you know 12 bar blues, then you know you're going to a D next, a D7, right? But. This is definitely clapped in here. Uh, a cool thing that can be done, instead of just playing a D7, which you could do, a walking side by side, is instead of just playing your normal D7, you're gonna take that D7 that you know, which if you don't, it's open D string, second fret of the G string, first fret of the B string, and second fret of the high E. But instead of playing it with your pointer, middle, and ring finger, you're going to do something different, okay? You're gonna incorporate your pinky. And while you're gonna do that, so then your D7 your, uh, D is gonna look like this. Your ring finger's on the second fret of the G, your pointer finger's on the B string, first fret, and then your pinky is on the high E second fret. Okay, the reason you're doing that is so that you can take this walk up Walking side by side. Okay, so what that is, is you're keeping that D7 going. It never really changes. But you're doing a walk up. So don't move. Let your ring and your pinky never move on this D7. You are going to have to get some assistance from your pointer finger. 
because you're gonna go open on the low E, first on the low E, and then second fret on the low E. E, F, F sharp. So this is a D7 with an F sharp over it. And what, what Clapton definitely does, uh, I can't say Rob Johnson does this, but Clapton does, is you're playing that me in the dead walk up I walk inside by side so you might do it a couple of times you would go right so me and the devil walk inside by side me and the devil so right when you get into it me and the devil do it again I walk inside by side so without thinking about beats and music theory and tempo and all that stuff you can really just think about doing the walk up as soon as you start that section that's going to start with the d7 me and the devil and then midway through the line do it again a walk inside by side and then you're going to go back to your chord that you already know the a7 shape that we did you're going to do your walk you're going to It's not really a walk down, it's just more of a sliding back and forth between that one that you have. And then you would hit the turnaround part, which is where you go to the five. I'm gonna be my woman. So you're just playing at E7 while you're bending up with the pinky on the uh, third fret of the B string. I'm gonna be my woman. Walk up to that D. 7 with F sharp to like you said is fine and then after that you're gonna open not gonna drone it you're actually just gonna do this open a string slide into the walk down that we learned though. and then you can just go into the next verse so that's the song um, you pretty much you've got it now uh, there's really nothing else to that song. If you wanted to do a solo break, you could by just throwing in maybe some, you know, A minor pentatonics. So let's see if we can come up with something, right? So it'd be like, let's see. I'm gonna be my woman till I get satisfied. Let's see if we can just come up with something. You can do whatever you want with a solo. There's really not necessarily a solo. Um, when he just plays it with an acoustic, he just keeps going and going until the end. Now, the only thing I'll show you left is a cool way to end the song, right when you get to the end of the song. So it would be after you do your walk down the very last time. So you play your E7, and then what you're going to do is you're going to play this slide up to an A7. What that is is you're starting by hitting the A string open and then you're barring everything on the first fret down so that's the D, the G, the B, and the E but then you're using your middle finger on the high E string the second fret and then you're gonna take that whole it's kind of a diminished chord and you're gonna slide it up one fret to really hit the resolution so it's gonna sound like and that's the end of the song so if you put all that together you put it all together and you play it, um, people are going to think you're Robert Johnson. And that's a really cool thing to, for people to think. Uh, and so, if you have any suggestions or any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I'll see you for the next one.